miles an hour before getting hot on the brakes. Here's the leader in the GT category, that new four-liter V8-powered BMW M3. Well, David, one of the things that that vet's been struggling with is getting long stints out of the tires. There's your GT leader, the number 42 Schnitzer V8 BMW uh, down in the pits. And uh, obviously driver change, that'll be J.J. Leto getting back on board that machine. And this has not been a clean, clear sailing ride for these boys here. Bit of a test session. We've spoken a lot all through the show here about this car, the V8 engine prepared by BMW Motorsport in Munich, then given to Schnitzer, will later be given to the PTG team here. But let's get an update from Dave. Dave? Mueller's in the car now. I uh, spoke to, or I'm sorry, Leto just hopped into the car, as you guys said. I spoke to JJ just a few minutes ago. You might have seen we showed his uh, his tootsies, as they say, on the air, and I told him his feet were now international superstars. He said, ah, I knew I should have had the manicure. But that's not going to keep him from going slow. Everything looks very routine now. He's off the jacks already, and we'll run back and see if we can uh, find York Mueller and get a word from him as well. He's just dropped his helmet off, and uh, we'll go and do that right now. York is in the background, and we'll shoot right over and find him. Can, can you tell us exactly what is, well, right now, how is the car working? Yeah, I mean, for that we've got the car so shortly, you know, the guys did a fantastic job. They, if there are flaws, where they are, what'll break, get it fixed, and if you end up having to run at the, at the win, better for it. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about this car. We know it's got a V8 engine. It's actually causing a bit, little bit of consternation with the Porsche cam, because they are of the opinion that this BMW car here actually contravenes the spirit of the rules. Not the rules, they are allowed to put this engine in here, but they believe the spirit of the rule, Derek, is being stretched a little bit because they never made a road car, unlike Porsche, who have made 1800 GT3s. So there's a little bit of intercamp rivalry raising their head because of this V8 M3 right here. Well, they're quite natural there would be, and it is very, very disappointing, but this stuff happens in motor racing. Everybody pushes the edge of the envelope, and if Porsche could, remember the Dower car at Le Mans. Good point. That is a good point indeed, and after all, they have filed the paperwork with the ACO to build some street models of this car, thus meeting the rule itself. Interesting. We'll be back. And your last car didn't, so there's your sister car here. Nicholas, there's been a lot of talk about the new V8 engine car. Can you tell us something? Uh, we know it's a little bit faster, a little bit better, but is there anything significant about the car that we haven't discussed yet? I mean, it, it is, the, it, is it the future for BMW with GT racing? Uh, I definitely think so. I mean, this car is completely different from the car you all see on the screen there now. It's a completely different uh, developed car and engine. Uh, drive train everything is completely new so I mean I will be very impressed if they can finish the race there I think we have some you know the hopes are to finish but I think the drive train and the gearbox is probably you know the, the most concern I don't think the engine is that big of a concern I think that will run okay good. how about chassis and, and, and the bodywork it almost looks like the, uh, the number 42 car is a little bit different look to it is it a more aggressive a body style? Uh, they have uh, stiffened the chassis up uh, so, so get, and they also have uh, a little bit different aer aerodynamics on the car. But otherwise from that, they're basically built on the same uh, chassis as the car you see on TV right now. We saw earlier in the show, we saw J.J. Leto when he got out of the number 42 machine, uh, incredibly hot. He had both feet in a nice bucket, he had ice on his hands. This is their marketing department. And uh, that's even true for our Panos cars, the road cars. Is, uh, if you develop a road car, if you're gonna sell it to the public, it should be able to race uh, if it's this, it meets all the rules. And uh, their sequencing was that Celine came out, but I, I happen to know that Celine is going to sell and is selling that car as a road car. It'll be the same engine, the same package that's in this race car. And uh, I, I give them uh, 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 Celine and Tony Johnson credit for putting all this together and looking forward. Now, the ACO made the decision, looked all their factory, all their information, all their cars, all their design, made a decision that this is going to be and will be sold as a road car, and they've let it in. But I was saying also, you know, I remember 1997, the FIA said that cars in uh, 96 had to be homologated to race in 97, and 
bingo at the last moment they changed for Mercedes to come in and Mercedes didn't have to mulligate to the end of the year and our team the Pano's team lost about three and a half months of development time and our first race turned out to be then Sebring so right. uh, it comes around I guess and uh, we all have to learn to live with it. Don you have come into sports car racing yeah, created the American Le Mans series you bought racing car companies involved in so many different things. You are a forward thinker. Is the business plan? It's about development, and racing isn't whether you have an assurance that you can win all the time. What brings people and what makes them want to race is if you can give them a little bit of hope and a chance to win. Right. That's what makes it. And uh, privateers are important. Without them, uh, there wouldn't be sports car racing. Uh, in our series, we take care of them with the prize funds and the awards. But we want them to see their technology increase. But the backbone is factory supported racing teams and factory supported teams. I'd say it's not exactly the backbone, but the, the fans want to see this. Right. And it has a huge influence on sure. where they go to watch. Okay, good. Well, if the factories make the investment to build the cars and then provide them to a variety of teams, I mean, that worked for Porsche for an awful lot of years and produced some of the greatest sports car racing ever, it certainly can happen here. We'll be right back. Or apparently being made on the BMW at this point. Again, this wonderful sounding V8. And this Beamer is uh, just uh, running extremely well. And Greg, tell me right now, I think, are they on the same lap as the 23? Did uh, they get a lap on them? They were a lap up on them, so I think they may have T5 seconds behind. Yep. Oh, a little problem, and the BMW is able to head out, but... So there's the story. That's going to be very interesting indeed. And for a team that came in here professing that, well, this is just a test session. We don't know that the car will even last, so we're just going to go out and treat it as a test session to get ready. They are putting on one strong debut performance here at the 12 Hours of Sebring, the new BMW Motorsports built V8. 10 is Oliver Penny, so there's a good idea of uh, what's going to happen when we get to Malaysia a little bit later tonight. There's your leader still in the GT division, the number 42 Schnitzer BMW, and that now is Mueller behind the wheel. You saw a quick glimpse of the crowd as we came back on the air there. More than 100,000 people here today. Last year over the course of the three days, you had 170,000 people here, but there are more people here at Don Panos. Mentioned earlier on, the largest attended sports car event in America. I mean, and it, it is an event here. This is just more than a race. This is an event in itself. Well, they're they're very confident. There's well over 100,000 people here today. And yesterday, I took some time. We were able to get around and, and explore. I think it was probably easily the biggest Friday crowd I've ever seen yeah. here. They had a record of 170,000 total for three days last year. They could be well underway to breaking that. Great racing. On board here, the number 43 Schnitzer BMW. That is the team car, not one of the V8s. As you can tell by the engine note, as you listen, that's one of the inline sixes. And uh, that's Dirk Mueller behind the wheel of that car, team with Frederick Eckblom. And uh, they're back in the order just a little bit, but uh, not too far, Dirk. Very different sound from this car than from the number 42 V8. Did you mention Barisev? No, he was. He's obviously. He's obviously in this race too. Yes. Well, that's right. I didn't mention. Okay, good. I wasn't sure. I was yeah. listening to something else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Through the wheels. Don't touch it. Can't touch it. But still get all the information you need. The development is absolutely amazing here. Wire. Yoast. Good compare. are back at Sebring. There is the number 43 Schnitzer BMW on board with that car right now. Again, you see the logo of BMW Motorsport. This car run by Schnitzer is one of the inline sixes, as you can tell by the engine note. Uh, in short order, it will be picking up one of those BMW Motorsport built V8s. Uh, they will be running that car, as will the uh, prototype technology group. They'll eventually all be running those of those V8s. You know, we were talking earlier about how Spirit of the Rules, as we watched the number two Audi go by, Spirit of the Rules, Porsche being upset. Well, of course, uh, back when PTG was sort of the front runner in the GT3 division, it was then called 
Porsche came out with this new 911 R GT3 R and they went well now this nice. is a huge new development and BMW was upset about it so part of it's just the politicking of the sport somebody else builds a little bit better or more effective package at this point and things change and, and remember it's important to point out spirit is what you're talking about this car is absolutely within the rules of GT racing and I will tell you something else what a fabulous looking motor car it is that just looks the business that BMW M3 it has very uh, uh, much a like a German DTM kind of look to it, doesn't it? With that those that looks fender flails and you know, a more arrow on the on the lower part of the chassis. Great. Just look, look how flat it is. I mean, it really is so flat going around the corners. And you actually look at the other cars, the Stuck cars, you'll find that they seem to roll a lot more. Right. right. I noticed it earlier watching out the track. Now here, the, uh, the engine note there. It's a it's a high revving V8 sound, but it's a distinctly different sound. Uh, it, it, it actually sounds like some of the Trans Am cars, like Lou Gelati used to run with the crossover pipes, that really in the small diameter on the pipe. It's an interesting note to it. This is an M3, obviously, and there isn't uh, yet on the road to go out and buy a V8 M3, but BMW makes a nice line of V8 powered cars. The 540 and the 740 are all V8s. And what is good about the fight now on the racetrack between Porsche and BMW, it really has caught the interest of both factories. Both factories, are uh, both uh, manufacturers, BMW and Porsche, are passionate behind the success, uh, potential success of this GT class. That is great. That is what drives this class to greater heights. And when we talk about manufacturers in this series, we should also remember Chrysler will be back midway through this year. They are developing a P car, a prototype car at the moment. Cadillac will be back with a development car, not the ultimate car that they will have in 2002. And also we should mention MG, the great name of MG from England, will also return to Le Mans this year. So Derek Bell, this is almost a resurgence, isn't it, of sports car racing, maybe to get back to the IMSA heydays that we've seen in the past. Most definitely. I mean, these people will come back if they can see some future. It's just that there's been this indecision over what's happening to sports car racing, and now it's starting to show positive you know, future, and that's why they're coming in. Of course they will. They've got to. They want to expose their products. Exactly right. And, of course, that's why BMW is involved, certainly. And uh, we have an opportunity to visit with Dr. Mario Tizen of BMW, who discussed their decision to put their factory effort in the GT category. We are really positive about ALMS. The series has developed quite well over the past years. Um, and for us, it's very important to be uh, in the States, to race in the States, because it's uh, a big market for BMW. And especially when we were there with our LMR prototype, America said to us, it's great that you are here with the LMR, but what really counts for us is the M3, because our M customers in the States are all race nuts, and they are, they are closely watching what we do with the M3 and ALMS. So it was clear to us to focus on the M3 and uh, to build a new car for 2001. Will you race it at Le Mans? Uh, we will not be in Le Mans this year, certainly not. Uh, the car is still under development, so what we, what we really focus on is to do the ALMS series this year, and there is no room to do such an, such an important and demanding race like Le Mans. That's going to be great. That GT battle is going to be fast and furious. Dirk Mueller here behind the wheel of the number 43 car, again, still running the uh, inline six. Uh, obviously, they're anxiously awaiting the development of the second and PTG prototype technology group of the, the, uh, their cars as well. They will all be running those cars. And uh, then I think the fight in GT will well and truly be on at this point. Derek, that gets back to what you're talking about, whether it's prototype or whether it's GT level. It's all about exposure. It's all about marketing and letting people know what they're capable of. Absolutely, and the, um, this series could really put it there for them as long as we get this stability for the future, which we mentioned just now, and it is heading that way. Don Panos is so, in, you know, so adamant that this is the way it should go, and I admire him immensely for that uh, vision he has. He has fought hard to bring it back to that point as well, uh, back to the glory days, if you will, and it's awesome to see it. There right now is your top ten overall. It's still an Aldo Capello up front. That has had some problems. Uh, well, let's go back. Oh, and a problem here is this. 
This we think is this is the 43 car. This is the 43 uh -oh. Schnitzer BMW. And that looks like it. There's no driver in it. It's a mechanic behind the wheel. That usually means it's going behind the wall. That is terminal. It's a very sudden that development. Is, so that is so sad because that is, that is such a good job. Remember, this is still a development program. The, the, the button was not pressed on this V8 program until September. So really, they were behind so much. Dave, you down there? Yeah, and I just spoke with Charlie Lamb, the uh, director for the program here, and he said it was a cylinder head. They are withdrawing the car. Okay. Now, this was the car that Leto and Mueller ran at Texas, of course, and now yeah. they've got the uh, the upgraded, their, or, or the V8. So uh, this is a car they're going to go, we believe, behind the wall here. A tough problem. It's not the first time, though, we've seen a car go behind the wall today. We were leading to this just a little bit sooner. Well, that is Peter Cunningham. We were just talking with Mike Pilati. Peter being uh, very busy here this weekend. Uh, that car right now still right in the fray in the uh, GT battle. Currently fourth in that category, a bit behind the top uh, three machines right now. But nonetheless, a very good run. The prototype technology group, that, that uh, inline six cylinder car, same one as the number 43 that just had problems. But as BMW Motorsport creates more of those uh, absolutely glorious V8 engines, that will, uh, this team will be fielding those cars as well. And uh, uh, I think having four of those cars going up against the, the, uh, the huge number of Porsches out there, this GT battle is going to be an exception. Absolutely. Just look how hard he's driving this thing. Got the tail skipping out, exiting corners. Teammates in this are Hanstuck and Barset. Looking at the exit of the pit lane, there goes the number six BMW on its way by, and there's the Porsche back in the fight. But now, of course, as we said, seventh overall is the number 42 BMW, currently driven by J.J. Leto. The number 23 machine there is your new leader in GT, J.J. Leto in the uh, BMW M3 V8 machine. The and it looks like uh, he may be making a move in. Is he making a pit stop? No. He continues on, folks. So Lato out front in GT. And as you can see, the sun setting very quickly here. Takes on a whole different aura here at night. We'll be right back to see you.